Hello and good evening, it's your boy Reed from Studio Rockpile. We're back at it again, painting my Galwegians now that I am no longer fucking dying. Oh boy, boy do I feel a lot better. Okay, so, uh, and also, now that there are no longer, uh, sirens going on outside. So we, uh, we're getting back to it. Just one second. And I might as asking for the link because they are lazy and can't just look it up or, you know, God forbid that they subscribe to my channel. Support your friends' businesses, kids. Always. Every time. Limbering up the fingers. Okay. I actually dug out one of my old Scots guard because it turns out he was on my shelf. People can see what I'm talking about with the... The camel cloaks. It's actually my first time painting camouflage on a model ever. I think it turned out pretty okay. And I even put tartan on the inside of the jacket. Because at the time, I had a jacket that had tartan on the inside of it. And I'm pretty pleased with how he turned out. Still, still mostly holds up to my, to my current standards today. Not really, but like, this one I was experimenting with a little bit. Put in a lot of extraneous detail that I didn't need to, like those shoulder pads. Oh, shit, it's not the best. I can do better now. You should see the shoulder pads I got on this one Dark Angel. But yeah, you, you get the idea. Ariadne has a lot of guys, like, they had sort of modern military stuff. I tried to find the... William Wallace and one or two of the Yu Ching models that I got just for the fun of it. And uh, I can't find them, so I unfortunately can't show you those. So where do we leave off? We left off. We were painting browns on dudes. We were painting browns. And I think we did that one. So we were base coating all the backpacks and all the hair in brown. And all the all the little bits of tactical gear. Just gotta smooth out my air bubbles. Cause I had the top of my wet palette. Cause I left the lid completely ajar. And when you put the water back in, air gets trapped under the hydration paper. Which, if you have no paint under it, is fine. Or on top of it is fine, because then you can just take a paintbrush and roll over it and they'll go out. But uh, if you got paint on it, you got to use the tips of paintbrushes. Don't use your fingers because then you get your awful skin grease all over the paper. And sometimes the water won't go through properly. Or worse, it will actually fuck with the consistency of wet paint. But you use your bare fingers on your bottles to wipe off paint. Yes, that's correct. Shut up. It's not about that. Do as I say, not as I do. Learn the basics, and then you can paint in whatever ridiculous roundabout method you decide is okay. Alright, let me turn on my painting light. Ba bam Okay. I actually need to move my, move my camera over a bit more. I really do need to set up a proper angle for that. Anyway, so. Also. Actually, if the camera's aimed that way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something new with my light there. Does that look a bit better on camera? Let's turn off autofocus. There we go. Yeah, lighting's a bit better. And my brown is still good. Alright. We'll just continue on where we left off. Let's paint in more. Paint in more of my con regular conscript. Not even technically conscript at the... Glaswegians were so fucking angry they just they just do it. They just go. They were just dudes living in backwoods. 
who happen to have a bunch of guns and flak jackets already because that's what you need to survive on Ariadne. It's basically a death world. I think when I stopped playing, they just... Or when everybody I knew stopped playing, because again, I only play one match. They had just released the, I think, Americans and Australian troops as options. And they had a lot of, like, rangers and... They had motorbike guys with tomahawks. Oh man, they looked cool. And more brown. I'm gonna top up our brown. We're just using the uh, Privateer Press Formula P3 Blood Tracker Brown. Which is a nice lighter brown that you can, you can blend it darker or you can blend it lighter. I like to pick mid tones for my colors and I can make them lighter and darker as I need. Unless I need something comedically bright. That's because I blend a lot. I blend a lot of my own paint. And if you if you don't got time for experimenting with that, you go ahead and you buy as many different paints as you want. I'm not gonna judge. A friend of mine does his own professional studio, and he's got like 73 different paints and uses 13 different brushes. And then I still beat him in a local painting contest. So, to each their own. As I've mentioned before, a five-time Slayer Sword Golden Demon winner. One using dollar store throwaway brushes, so you don't gotta go fancy. You don't gotta buy the expensive shit. You're just getting into it. Don't think that a better brush makes you a better painter. A better brush will make you a more broke painter if you don't know what you're doing. And you ruin a $15 sable hair brush. Because you didn't know that you had to wet the bristles first. Just learn the basics. Just focus on those if you're getting into it. And if you're somebody who already knows what they're doing, you do you. You know what works. Don't ever let anybody ever tell you how to do it. But, but listen to what they're saying. They might know something you don't. They might just know a little something something. Might just be something you've never considered. It it might be something incredibly useful. Or maybe you've just been doing it wrong and somebody else told you it wrong. Who knows? Oh, not a cat. What you want, Garfield? Oh, he wants out. My orange boy wants out. Let me get the paint off my brush, little man, and I'll let you out. He just got up from his nap, and he was very quiet. He's a sleepy boy. Okay, one second. One second, our little bud. He's a, he's a fussy old boy. He's a fussy old cat. No big sweetheart, though. He's the reason I gotta stop painting every so often, because he decides, nope, it's time to sit in your lap and get cat hair on everything on your desk. And, uh, and then I have a bad day. Well, I don't have a bad day, I just start painting. I stop painting, rather. And I got a cat in my lap. He's a big cuddly boy. Guy I work with today was saying he doesn't he doesn't know why people get cats like dogs he gets but he doesn't understand cats. You can't hang out with a cat. Yeah, you can. You can't hang out with your cat. You got a shit cat. And don't get me wrong, some cats are just completely antisocial. Okay, that's weird. Why is it showing right side up? on OBS, but it's upside down, and you know what, I'm not even going to question it. Don't think about it. 
gloves were staying black. The gloves were gonna stay black. That's what we were doing. I'm trying to remember what my what my color scheme was. Even though I got the reference image open. I was gonna do something a little different. And I am taking my time with these because these ones I did kinda wanna do up to the nines. I don't know how detailed I'm gonna make them yet, but it's gonna be it's gonna be more detailed than our war priest. I'm gonna do a lot of edge highlighting. I'm gonna try some blending. Because if you actually if you look at Vinity's display models in their catalog, it's it is ridiculous. No heavy metal scheme there, just full on just full on blending. The point that I actually thought for the longest time that their stuff was like crazy precision airbrushed. And then I learned how to actually blend like that and I went, fuck that. I think I mentioned it once when I was just learning about non-metallic metal. And this actually chased me away from painting for the better part of two months because I started to feel real depressed. I spent 11 hours blending a chest plate. Just, just the chest plate, not even, not even full armor. And he's like, yeah, and uh, eventually I decided it was good enough. Not that he was happy with it, just that, just that it was good enough. And I kind of decided that I, uh, I didn't feel like doing that. I was just double checking this one doesn't have pockets, because... This one's got pockets on the back, but that other one doesn't. And leaning forward body type's got butt pockets. Everybody remember that. Remind me later. Because I will forget about the butt pockets. Yeah, that's, my, that's my only complaint about Infinity, is that there is no customization to the models at all well that's fine because you can buy exactly what you need in a model thanks to their fun little blister packs that are also relatively cheap before i got well not before i got out before everybody i knew got out i still would actually very much like to play more infinity because it's a neat system it's very very small scale very tactical like you every turn you get two half actions or a full action and the full action can include moving between bits of cover without everybody on the map fucking lighting you up and filling you full of lead as uh, when you step out of cover everybody has a reaction to shoot you on sight it's annoying as shit You got a minute, I think. I forget if there were actually ammo counters. I don't know. It's been, uh... Like I said, it's been a hot minute since I played. I only played one game. But it was fun. It was very fun. I don't believe that I won, but I scared the shit out of my opponent. It was one of my friends. He was very annoyed. He actually knew how I played Warhammer, which was, fuck the objectives, fuck the points, I'm just going to start stacking bodies. And I tended to do it pretty well. Never won games because of points, I always won games prematurely because I was the only person with models still left on the table. Out of my friends. I don't, I don't, I didn't. I don't go to tournaments. Tournament players are a different breed. And that's that's not why I do this. Or why I like these games. I like these games because... Uh, well, you play it with your friends. You all know what the other ones are going to do. And so it's mind games as to whether or not anybody's actually going to do the thing that everybody else knows that they are going to do. Oh man, Reed's building another list. I wonder how many heavy weapons are going to be in this one. And in terms of my Dark Eldar army, the answer was... Yes. 
back in 5th and early 7th edition, Dark Eldar, you just take a bunch of Trueborn, give them blasters, and stick them in a Venom, two Splinter Cannons. For those of you who are not aware, a blaster is a single shot assault type weapon, meaning there is no penalty for shooting it while moving, and it can melt more or less anything you throw it at. And splinter cannons are a fun anti-infantry weapon, that because they are mounted on a vehicle, don't care about movement at all. So you would stick five of these dudes with those guns, two of those cannons, in a very fast-moving vehicle that doesn't give a shit about difficult terrain. Okay. And it has its own special uh, invulnerable save that you can stack with evasive maneuvers to basically make your vehicle nigh unkillable. And so you just zip around the map, popping everything. It was funny as shit. You gotta, you really gotta think about your placement, though, because uh, sheer weight of fire will kill it. And then your pinata of squishy boys with heavy weapons pop out. But uh, you pay, it, you play it right, and it's very funny. Whereas my space wolves army just had a ton of very heavy weapons. At, uh, you either had to charge them, at which point they would countercharge you, and you were fucked. Or you had to outrange them, and while not the most shooty army, Space Wolves were relatively shooty back in 5th and 7th edition. Which confused the fuck out of people, because they, they thought they were a melee army. And yes, they are. They can do it reasonably well. They're more like a good all-rounder. There is an opponent there. I am going to kill them. That's the philosophy. And they had a uh, they had a lot of gear to do it. I don't know. I'm looking into ninth edition. I want to see what ninth edition is like because apparently they brought back melee after it was nigh on impossible to do in eighth edition. But uh, friendly local game store is closed. So. Don't exactly uh, have people to play with right now. But, vaccines starting to make the rounds, and because I fall under uh, essential workers, I should hopefully be getting it by the start of June. Uh, I can see the boys again. I miss my friends. I miss hanging out with them, you know? I think we all miss that right now. But hey, we'll get through it. We're all gonna make it, guys. Yeah. Just kidding. Just... No, gotta go fast. Paint as fast or as slow as you want. When it gets done when it gets done. Man, so we had a fun day at work today. There's uh, eight of us crammed into this tiny fucking boiler room. About the size of a uh, reasonably large kitchen for a small suburban household. Eight of us, four plumbers, four electricians. All trying to do work, and the best way I can describe it is, if you have ever watched any of the Marx Brothers movies, who were a fun... I mean, they made comedy movies back in the 1950s. I forget what movie it was, but they're on, uh, they're on some sea liner. 
And this dude has the smallest cabin on the boat. And I forget exactly how many people they fit in, but it must have been like 20 people into a space the size of like a small bathroom. Not like a public bathroom, like a small house bathroom, like an apartment bathroom. Oh man, it was funny. Yeah, I'm the engineer. I'm here to turn off the heat. Great, it's over there in the corner. Just kind of cut your way through. Ah, uh, yes, would you like a manicure? Yeah, sure, come on in. Might as well. I'm going to be at sea, I'm going to be fashionable. Yes, I'm the engineer's assistant. I somehow predicted you were coming. Well, try to get over there if you can. And he's already got three guys in the room. And the ladies show up to clean the sheets. And they're trying to make the bed while everybody else is in this goddamn room. And then room service shows up with the food. And then, of course, at the end of it, some person who's lost on the boat goes to open the room door and just everybody falls out into the hallway. Of course, it's 1950s movie tech, so it's, it's sped up at, like, fucking triple time when they all shoot out into the hallway. Oh, it was great. Oh. My cat is crying in the hallway. He wants back in because he's a fussy old boy. He can't make up his mind on what he wants to do. I can't let him in my lap because he's gonna mess up my painting. Okay, hang on, hang on. We're gonna go get my boy. And now he's back in the room, and he wants back out. Man, he, he can't make up his mind. No, you can't. No, you can't. What you doing? You being a big baby. You a big baby cat. No, you can't come up. You're gonna get cat hair on my paint. You can have a cuddle later. Okay? You can have a cuddle when the stream is done. My poor boy. My poor boy. Oh, he's a good cat. He's a good cat. Don't get, if you're gonna get a cat, don't get it from a breeder. Get a rescue. They are the sweetest. Okay, well, did I get everything? No, oh, why not touch that up? I don't want to use a wash on these, but I might have to at the rate this is gone. Because they got, uh, they got a lot of little grooves. The models that, that uh, who, who is the company that makes Infinity? Uh, named after a crow. Corvus, Corvus Belly? Box. Got a Corvus. Well, I got another infinity box here somewhere. Well, what are you? What are you? There it is. Nope. That's not infinity at all. That's Malifaux. I'm gonna paint one of those later. Ah, there we go. My Wolvers, which I never painted. But bam, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish these boys on stream. Painted a few of these. Look at that. Oh, it's gonna be good. These were the aforementioned shot through with wolf DNA. Boys, uh, yes, Corvus Belly. Corvus Belly is the one that makes Infinity. Oh, I sold my Scotsguard box. What the fuck? That's cool. Yeah, look, there's the there's the full squad of Scotsguard. Nah, that, that was the one that I showed a minute ago. That one. They're my favorite unit. They look cool. Let's see, are you done? Got all the brown bits on you painted? I'll have to do a touch up later. I'll do a touch up later. Yeah, I still had to go over the black on everybody, didn't I? Shit. It's fine. I'll go back and we'll do that afterward. We'll keep rotating. It's fine. I'm not worried.
Was my pallet around the other way last time? Not important. It probably was. Because I remember the magnets were on the wrong side. Yes, there are magnets on it. Or, uh, you can see. Just push all the minis over and hopefully none of them scratch. I got my little, my little thing of wells for washes, which I'm actually just kind of keeping bits in. Because I'm a savage. I don't dust it. I don't dust anything. Because I'm a disgusting human being. Really, I should dust. I got a like minor dust allergy. Might even just be dust mites. I don't know. Not important. Let's just slap some brown all over this model, all over his, all over his face, and his sword and his gloves. Because I'm dumb, and I assembled this before I painted it. And I really shouldn't have done that with these swords, but, uh, as I mentioned last time, painting pewter can be a motherfucker. Especially assembling after the fact. Like, it's, it's, it's the worst. Pewter models are nice to have, painted, and on the table. They are very satisfying to move, but they are one of the worst goddamn materials to paint on. Actually, actually cancerous. Actually terrible. It's just, it's not fun. Prime the shit out of your pewter, kids. Always prime the shit out of your pewter. Because your paint won't stick. I think I might, uh, I think I might stream Blasphemous again on Saturday. I haven't played that game in a couple weeks. I want to. Just, it's rad as shit. Apparently I'm about halfway done, according to how long to beat. So. Might do that. Might do that. I talked about not a start applying Dyson Sphere Simulator, Dyson Sphere program, like a more more comfy, larger scale version of Factorio. Well, Factorio actually scales infinitely, but like Dyson Sphere program actually has multiple planets and stars, so different kind of scale. Same type of long distance logistics. Power generation is still a bitch. I spent a good uh, four hours screaming at my power grid while, while hand bombing hydrogen fuel rods in. That could not produce enough power. What the fuck? Yeah, I should not have put the arms on this damn thing. But the problem is, you mess up gluing them on, uh, the super glue will just strip the paint clean off the pewter. Primer and all. And it's not fun. And you gotta do nightmarish patchwork. If it was on a particularly detailed piece, well, God help you. Just a bit of his hair and a bit of his shoulder strap. Let's give it a quick once over. That might have actually been part of his shirt. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Playing this piece purely for me. It's not going in a contest. Nobody's uh nobody's gonna be inspecting it. Remember your audience when you paint, kids. Who are you, who are you actually painting for? And that'll really determine what you do. If 
Mr. One Hundred. If you're somebody who wants to do contests, by all means, have at it. But uh, you're at the mercy of the judges and what they like. You paint for yourself, or you just paint to have better looking models than everybody at your local store. It'll be a lot more comfy. I've had my fill of little contests. I'm just, I'm painted for me now. I want to paint things that I enjoy and I want to put them up on my shelf. I don't know, it's therapeutic. I like it. And if you're painting along too, remember, keep your, always keep your brushes wet. Don't want the paint dry on the brush. Try and keep like leave, keep the paint on the bottom half of the bristles too. You don't wanna you don't want too much because it'll work its way into the whatever the hell the metal part's called, and then your bristles will splay out, and then the brush is ruined, and it's just an elaborate dry brush. Yeah, squad painting can be a little boring. It's fun to hammer out single models, but you got a backlog to get through. Squad painting is unfortunately something you're going to have to do. That's something I got tired of. Which is why I don't do it often. And if you're into wargaming, well, you're going to be cranking out like 20, 30 of the same model. One of the reasons why I play some of the armies that I do because the models still feel very individual. Like each individual Space Wolf can have a lot of character. Dark Eldar? Not so much. Okay, you've got those straps painted, that's fine. You got those straps. You got those little little strappies on the on the sporin. That's what the that's what the little kilt purse is called, by the way. It's a sporin. There you go. Yeah, just a little, just a little line there. Okay. Now we're gonna do black. My black paint's still good. Oh, kind of. Okay. All right. So once over the boots. The boots, boots and gloves are really all it's gonna be black. No, no, I need more black paint. I'm gonna pop up on black. We're using, we're just using Vallejo black. That's their, that's their model color. I got mixed feelings about the, the model color line because uh, it's good quality paint, but some of it's just a little too glossy. And I, uh, I tend to like flat colors on my models. But uh, I paint with, uh, I don't paint, but I seal afterward with a, a matte varnish, so. Everything winds up being flat colors anyway. And then I also have a brush on high gloss varnish for shinier surfaces. I would recommend, I would recommend that. But have a specific varnishing brush because that shit'll that shit'll destroy your bristles. So I completely don't have the model on screen. It's fine. I'm not the, I'm not a professional. I'm not one of those people that has to entertain a couple billion viewers. I'm just doing this for me. If I get one person into the hobby, or I don't know, I give people a little bit of insight into it. And so be it. Some people just want to watch the process, then right on. It's like the two the two things that really keep people out of this hobby are A cost to entry and B the uh, 
time it takes to assemble and paint everything. Like I used to run my university's games club for like four or five years, and uh, you know we'd have various war gaming nights to try and get people into it, right? We had enough armies between us that we could have several games going at the same time. The biggest problem people always had when we asked them why you don't get into it is always, always, number one, price. Number two, time. Nobody wants to assemble and paint everything. And that's fine. That's fair. But there are plenty of ways, especially that contrast paint. Like, I, I talk shit about Citadel paint constantly. But those contrast paints are great if you're somebody that just wants to hammer stuff up. By all means. If you're one of those people, give them a shot. They're, uh, they're good for that. I bought one or two to experiment on uh, colored metallics with. It came out alright. I think I showed that one earlier, that pair of funny metallic legs. Metallic blue, metallic green. I was doing an Alpha Legion color scheme and it turned out pretty good. I was just trying to think. I was pleased with it. Yeah, just, just gloves and boots. We're not going to be doing too much with that. Yeah, paint and paint and black on black. I know it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Oh yeah, meme of the day is uh, y'all ever think John? I know it says John Deere on the tractor, but it looks like uh, to me it looks like it's a smaller subtitle. I don't know. I love that image. It's a it's a whole ass mood. If you know what I mean. We're going quiet. I need to find some royalty free background music. Someone's not going to trip the fucking copyright. I got this nice lo fi playlist that I like, but uh. Well, Twitch immediately muted the entire goddamn stream when I had that on, so. I don't know. And I see a lot of people doing lo fi. Like having lo fi in the background. I should shoot them a message and. Ask what the deal is with that. It's because I don't I don't got time to read through like fifty pages of YouTube legalese. What does and does not classify as copyright strikeable shit. Which is funny because when uh technically speaking None of these copyright laws apply to the digital medium just because of technical bullshit. Although in terms of media production, yes, they do apply, sort of. Yeah. I guess if you're using it as like a background piece, but in terms of... Actually, really, I mean for pirate. It's really more for the case of piracy. Technically, that's a whole different thing. Ignore me. I'm, I'm thinking and confusing things. I will. I will ramble. That's kind of kind of what I do.
Well, yeah, nice, nice weather's coming back in. So it was good, good weather for kayaking today. Never been kayaking. I would, I would recommend it. It's, it's, it's fun. It's enjoyable. Just, uh, just don't get in the tandem kayak. Okay, my friend, uh, my friend who's really big into outdoorsing. His family owns like four canoes and two kayaks, and they go they go crazy backwoods camping. Like they go middle of the winter backwoods camping. The man is a violently Canadian, a good type of violently Canadian, and uh, he refers to the tandem kayak as the uh, as the divorce boat because you you got to be coordinated if you, if you're two, two people that are in the uh, tandem kayak. Some couples will rent one for a weekend. By the end of the weekend, they want to fucking kill each other. So that boat is going nowhere. Like, two people in a canoe can already be bad enough. Especially if the person who's supposed to be steering doesn't steer. Or worse, the person who's not supposed to be steering is trying to steer. Oh, this is the one whose boots I already painted. Okay, it's fine. We'll touch him up anyway. Another little layer of paint isn't gonna hurt. Thin coats, kids. Thin coats. Well, yeah, if you've never gone backwoods camping, it's a lot of fun. Can be a little scary if it's your first time. As uh you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and you hear something stepping around and snuffling outside of your tent, and you're like, ah shit, is that a bear? Well, it might be. One time for me, it was. I actually gotten to see a black bear up close. They're like they're like big stupid dogs. Black bears are relatively chill. You yell and they'll go away. But uh, brown bears are crazy. Grizzly bears are pretty... From what I've been told, they're pretty chill as long as they don't have babies around. And if they have babies around, run. Or, or just, just pray that they don't see you. Really, it's best to just stay out of bear country. Because, uh, you know, bears... Don't don't keep food in your tent. Don't bring the camping stove into your tent. Kinda wanna paint wooden paneling. You know, look at this. It's like almost like uh Nah, I don't know. I don't know about enough about firearms to say what that is. Well, we're gonna paint it black, and then I don't know. I'm gonna pick out some metallic bits on it later, maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh man, I can actually use this as a demo for. Nope, that is a tiny goddamn scope. Holy shit! Goddamn, that is that is small. Look at that. That's, and then there's the tip of my brush. I'm not gonna paint that. Not with this brush. I might bring out, I might bring out my tiny nose hair brush. Like, uh, like that clip on Spongebob. And he puts the, puts the tip of the paintbrush up his nose and he pulls out the one nose hair. That's, that's what we're dealing with. what I first tried using for when I was painting script. Talking about like actual actual writing letters on miniatures. And uh mixed results. And then I learned that the uh bigger brush is sometimes better. You know, just just fuck up their face. It's fine. It's fine. We make mistakes. We can fix it later. Trying to fill in their mouth. And did not go as planned. It's fine. Fix it afterward. 
Actually, there's a very cool technique you can do for uh, anodized metal with pewter. Which is, you paint it, and then afterward you purposely chip it. Because the paint will actually chip off the pewter. So you can do some fun effects with that. One friend of mine just leaves bare pewter and just puts an ink over it and then seals it afterward. To get some quick and dirty metallic effects. Because he hates, he hates painting metals. Okay, last one. Then I think we're gonna loop around with the metal. And we'll do the kilts. I haven't decided what kilts I'm gonna do yet. I'm gonna do actual clan colors, or I'm gonna make something up. Probably make something up. Because I'll be I'll be here all night looking at references for clan colors. For those unaware, Scotland has a bunch of clans, and they all have different tartans. My adopted clan is the modern Douglas. Well, not adopted clan, but the, the tartan that I wear is the modern Douglas. It's the one that my family adopted, because we are not directly related to any of the clans. We actually can't trace what clan we are derived from. And it just so happens that my dad got married in the modern Douglas. And, uh, yeah, yes, we, I do own a kilt. And the kilt that I picked out happened to be the modern Douglas. And so, we've just kind of adopted that as our family starting. I remember right though, my mom can actually trace trace to I think it's the Macaulay clan. But we're like two or three times removed from that, so my dad grew up in the middle of nowhere, so Not exactly as I uh, I went too fast. I went too fast at that edge. I broke my own rule. Now I made a mess. So we're just gonna clean that up real quick. I'll go back to our Kislev flush. Always give your paint a shake. Just to stop it from separating. Oh yeah, and I found out, uh, or not found out, but rather I remembered that if you are gonna get Citadel paints, you can you can buy dropper bottles pretty cheap. And you can transfer it real quick. Real easy like. You just get like I'm not gonna say get a tiny funnel, that's probably a bad idea, but you can probably rig up like a little stand with toothpicks or you know, as I've said several times, because it's good for everything, sprue. I really should get some of those dropper bottles. Dropper bottles are great. I like them. They're good. You know what? Her face and arms are actually pretty grody, so I'm gonna go over those again. Go over those again and touch them up. And you will. You will have to go over things two and three times. There's one layer once I had to go over like five times in a row. Well, not in a row if you're going after over it in a row. Go on to something else. Move on to something else. In between, in between touching up layers. Well, don't keep touching the same one because sometimes the paint doesn't dry completely. And when you think you're applying more, you're actually removing it because the water's reactivating the not quite set paint. One of the few things that Citadel paints actually do really well in general is uh, their paints dry really fast, which is annoying as shit. Good if you're starting out, but later it can get annoying. This gives you less time to work on a particular area if you are trying to blend. 
Or, you know, just do whatever. I don't know. What what palette makes that a lot easier? Can you do your blending on the palette? Again, not sponsored, but I will recommend the, the Red Grass Games wet palette. I like it. It's good. I've been using it for... two-ish and a half years in which I've taken technically a year and a half because I did stop painting for a total of like one year not all at once it was like a month off here two months off there and then up until I started doing paint streams I took six months off I just I don't know I hit a weird skill plateau and I just hated everything I was making and sometimes you will do that. That's the annoying way that your eye for a talent versus your actual skill at the talent sort of leapfrog over each other. And it's when your eyes are getting better and your talent is not, or your skill is not, that, uh, that you start to get depressed. You start to hate your work, and that's where the uh, a lot of people will bounce off of whatever it is they're doing. And it applies to just about anything. Especially with... Uh... Fuck, let's use Dark Souls as an example. Dark Souls has a weird... sort of... skill progression whereabouts... 12 to 20 hours in, you will just feel something suddenly click. And suddenly you're significantly better at the game. And up until that point, it's where a lot of people will bounce off. Like, oh, everything keeps hitting me. Oh, why can't I figure out the enemy pattern? It's like, well, that's not easy to do. Your ability to see what you're doing wrong versus your ability to actually correct it are not, uh, they don't progress at the same rate. They sort of leapfrog over each other. Except they're leapfrogging ever upward. I'm going to touch up the skin down there. I could use it. I'll go over the arm again. The bottom of the arm. That needs a little more. Face is looking okay. I'll put up a bit more forehead there. Excuse me. You want out again now? We're such a fussy boy. Okay, hang on. He's just he's just a fussy old boy. He's an old cat. He's like he's like fifteen years old. We don't know an exact date because he was a rescue. But yeah. He gets to be fussy at that age. Uh Nah, I'm gonna be lazy. I'm not doing non metallic metal. We're gonna do regular ass metal. So we're gonna get out of private tier press, pig iron. Which is a darker shade of metal. And uh, as we went over with the Inquisitor, I like to do base shade. Base shade of pig iron. Oh no, I was actually gonna. Shit. I was gonna show what I meant about undercoating. Okay, we're gonna. I'm just gonna wash that off. I'm just gonna get the brush wet. And we're gonna. Wet up the surface, and then clean off the brush. Yeah, this is so. This is a thing you can do if uh, you apply paint and you decide you no longer want paint where you applied it. You just clean off your brush, load it up with water, and just go over the surface again. And then, bubba boo! Look at that. There's 
All just about all the silver paint's gone. All that's left are little silver flecks, and then we can just wipe that off. We can just wipe that off, and I wiped off the primer, and that's exactly what I was talking about. As you can see there, that's not silver paint. That is the actual pewter shining through. So be very careful when you're painting with pewter. We're gonna touch this up with primer, and then we're gonna scoot on over to a different model. So we're gonna just take a little bit, a little bit on the brush, and we'll just touch that right back up. There we go. Repimed. Problem solved. He's good. And normally we say less is more, but with primer, more is more. Prime the fuck out of it. Use pewter. Details on Infinity's models are comedically well defined. So you can you can apply several layers and you won't really lose definition. Alright, so what we're gonna do real quick, I'll put you the fuck away. We're gonna stretch. Ugh. Ooh, shoulders are stiff. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Just fillet whole white. Just a little bit. Oh my god, the bottle's overflowing. Okay, okay, it's fine. My only complaint about dropper bottles is sometimes they will just... Just like volcanoes, you just take off the lid after you shake it and the paint just decides to make a break for it. Which is fine. I don't think I've ever actually managed to use an entire bottle of paint before it's dried out on me. So, yeah, we're gonna just take a little bit. Have way too much on that brush. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna... On your metallic surface, you're just gonna go over the high points quick and dirty. You can do a couple lines here and there. Metal is like that. Metal, uh... Metal reflects light weird. So you can, you know, you can spend fucking weeks. Like it's a, it's an entire ass masterclass study the way that metal refracts light, reflects light. It refracts too. It's got weird. It's got some weird subsurface scattering, I believe is the term going on. And yeah, you're just gonna touch with the side of your brush all the edges, and a couple of lines in the surface too. Why, why the fuck not? You ever see, if you want to see what I mean, get like a... Go to somewhere that sells like kitchen utensils. And just... Get something like stainless steel or... Not stainless steel, another shiny stainless steel. Get like brushed nickel or aluminum or some shit. Something with like a sort of rough, grainy metal texture to it. And just kind of hold it up in the light. And see the way that the light refracts off of all the surfaces. And you'll get what I mean. Right around that barrel. My axe will go over the entire edge. Not the entire edge, we'll... I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. You'll get a sort of... You'll get a feel for it over time. Just go over the edges. If there's no, if, if there would be no light shining on that surface, just go over the little very edge. And select that. Just be quick and dirty. It doesn't have to. You do not have to be fancy with it. Oh, we're gonna touch, touch the grenades too. Just touchy, touch the grenades. I probably should have cleaned those up, but who cares? I'm gonna do those silver as well. Okay, we're good. I got some finer details with belt buckles and what have you, but I'm I'm gonna do those after the fact. I'm gonna do all the buckles and what have you dead last. Just because it is the smallest detail. And that's that's just the way that I feel about that. You want to do them first, and that suits your style, you do you. 
it's what works. I don't gotta paint the way that I do. I'm just here to give some guidance and ideas. Who's booping me? Who's sending me a Discord? Oh shit! Melty Blood's getting a remake with rollback netcode? Oh hell yeah. Uh, appropriate reaction emote. Real shit. Oh bam. No, no, delete that. Delete that. Delete that. That's not what we're gonna send them. We're gonna send them the photo of the guy from the new Yakuza game looking at his phone while smoking a cigarette. He's just got this super intense look on his. You know what? I'm gonna change. Uh, I'm gonna change move of the week to that. I'm gonna clean off my brush first while I do this. Replacing meantime. It's no longer y'all ever think John. It's now this. It's now that. It's a very powerful image. <laughs> I love it so much. So it's just it's just a whole ass mood. It. it makes me very happy. I don't know why it makes me very Ah <laughs> uh, yes, a new and an entirely new generation to play Melty Blood in the bathrooms. Perfect. Oh, for those unaware. At Evil One so Melty Blood is an old ass game. Like, we're talking early 2000s, I think. Possibly even the 90s, don't quote me. And so, at EVO one year, which is the big international fighting games tournament, uh, they deadass did not have a room for Melty Blood black brackets. So they played in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom stall. <laughs> It's just been a meme ever since. The reason that Smash players all smell like shit is because the Melty Bud players are occupying the showers. My friend just sent me a, uh, a old photo of a bunch of Melty Bud. There's two Melty Bud players in the bathroom. <laughs> and they have the TV lopsided in the fucking sink. And they're playing on that while they're on the floor. Yeah, another guy has his laptop precariously balanced on the toilet. Oh, it was beautiful. Oh man, fighting fighting game culture is one of the weirdest things I've gotten into. It's great. Remember, kids, the uh, the timer may run out, but the combo is infinite. <laughs> Your health bar may empty, but the combo keeps going. Also, yeah, that Scott's guard that I showed earlier has the uh, annoying as fuck armor piercing rifle that everybody hates. That we get a ton of super cheap for no reason other than to offset the fact that, haha, Ariadne has no tech. We are the least techie army. We don't need it because we're that fucking angry. I'll try to very carefully do a little bit. A little very bright line of air. Right up the middle. And this all comes with practice. Being that precise. Which I wasn't. I'm not going to kid myself. I'm not God's gift to painting. I'm just pretty okay. I'm pretty good. I'm painting out of focus range again. This is just to sort of brighten up the metal underneath. You don't have to do this perfect. You don't gotta be super precise. You can be sloppy as shit with this. 
because you're going to slap like two, three layers of metals on, and all this is really going to do is make certain points shine slightly better when you do your highlights. And that's it. Oh, wait, the hilt. No. What I do? Oh, bam. Ciao. Right there. Just like that. Just real easy, like. So my cat is fucking bopping at my door again. Because he wants... He wants cuddles, but nobody will give him cuddles right now. And I can't cuddle him while I'm painting. Yes, I know, little bud. I know. But I'm painting. You got cuddles earlier. He got an entire slice of ham this morning because he was a very good boy. I just like the little, little precise sandwich ham. Nothing fancy. I don't give him like a steak. Oh man, I would love to give my little butt a steak. Oh, he'd love it. When I get chicken, though, oh my god. When I give him a little bit of chicken, my boy loves his chicken. He loves his chicken. And when you're doing the little diagonal highlights, it's always, it's always brightest in like the middle. I'll just go over the middle a couple extra times, maybe. So we get a sort of starker white. Yes. Yes, buddy, we've seen the fucking black hole image from, what, two years ago? And the internet got fucking horny for a black hole, goddamn. Y'all see that? They waifu fied the goddamn black hole? I mean, I'm not surprised. I've been on the internet long enough. I know how it works. Internet full of horny people. I can say that. Don't worry. I made uh, I made sure my channel is not safe for children. Children don't need to be getting into this hobby and bankrupting their parents. I kinda actually want to do the knife as a flat black. Like it's all one piece. Oh shit, they took an EM spectrum of the black hole. Okay, that's new. We got spirals and shit going around it now. That's kinda neat. It looks like my will to live. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm actually in a relatively better place right now. Last uh last two and a half years been pretty rough for me. But we're we're getting there. Day by day. We're all gonna make it. Still got shit I want. So, we're gonna be okay. I got good friends. I got good friends. I got a good job. I'm a very lucky person. Not a lot to be thankful for. I'm just gonna go over this again because... Part of it's not very well defined, and I want to define it more. Remember, go, go heavier on certain areas. I'm overdoing it. It's it's fucking zenithal highlighting. It doesn't gotta be. It doesn't gotta be crazy. But I'm trying to illustrate a point to the people that are not uh, familiar with it, just to really see what I'm doing. Okay. And now, we can paint with pig metal, pig iron. I'll go to you, because you should be the most dry by now. I don't know, I keep a, fa I keep a fast rotating on, uh, on my models. What's this? 
we're gonna ignore that. Bro, can you guys fucking not? Can you guys don't? No cat tax though? Four for, four for cat. Friend took a photo of a big fat cat. I'm just sleeping on some stairs. What a boy. What a lad. Oh, I tried to fuck up the face on that one. It's fine. We'll touch it up later when we go back to shade the face. And so, yeah, just, just slap a coat of metal on there. And it's real delicate, like. Doesn't gotta be heavy. Actually, now that I think about it, I should paint the bolt solid white. I'm gonna paint the bolt solid white first because the bolt always super shiny in those ejection points. There. And then we'll just take a little dab of black. And then we'll just go over that little, that inside corner. And some people are probably, oh yeah, there's another thing people are worried about is, one of these things is always, oh, my, my finger, my hands are that steady, I can't paint like that. Well, don't care, don't worry, mine are, mine are shaky as shit too. Trick, I find, is to touch your hands together. Alright, you may have seen me doing that. I typically touch my like pinky and ring finger, or I study my hand somewhere. On what, no, normally my pinky. I normally push my pinky into whatever I'm working on somewhere. And well, that way what it's doing is, it's all finger control, which you need to do to move the brush anyway. And that just comes with practice. This way, if you're, 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 and I study my elbows too. I study my elbows on my desk. And this way your hands are shaking in the same direction at the same time. Well, who told you that? Nobody. Nobody told me that. An idea I came up with after studying a little bit of orbital dynamics. I'm gonna touch up the face now. Why was I studying orbital dynamics? I hear you ask. That sounds like rocket science. Sorry about that, I got rudely interrupted. Uh, yes, I, I used to play a game called Kerbal Space Program, which is a lot of fun. You need to build your own rockets out of modular rocket parts and try to get it into space with little green men called Kerbals. And if at first you don't succeed, you just haven't killed enough of them. Oh man, I really messed up this guy's face earlier. We're just touching him up now. We're touching up now, regardless. And we'll go over his arm again while we're here, why not? Do I still have enough on there? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. There we go. We good. Yeah, that's the only thing about the metallic paints. Don't don't put them on your wet palette. They they never thin out the way that you want. You just wind up with the silvery water. It's not really good for much. I'll tell a lie, it's good for adding certain sort of effects, but if you're trying to paint solid metal, it's not gonna not gonna come out the way that you want. So yeah, don't don't thin your metallic paints. They don't normally need it. Unless you unless they're starting to dry out. 
They're starting to dry out. They get they get all gummy first, kind of like that. That's a big. That's not liquid. That's a chunk. So that I can set on my palette. And as long as I work with it quickly, it should be okay. It shouldn't get too wet, too watery. Ah, shit! Did I paint his grains? I didn't paint any of them yet. Okay, I'm not going senile. You're going senile. It's been a long day. I've been out on, like I said, been out, been out on the roof in a boiler room. It's a penthouse boiler room, so. On the very tippity top. And the sun beating down right on it. And like I said, it was a nice day today. I actually took an extended lunch meal, sat out on the roof. Because I work for a small company, run by scumbags, we can do that. The good kind of scumbags, sort of. I think we managed to save a lot of money. But we cut a lot of corners. Everything's safe though, don't worry. We take, we take safety very seriously. But uh, everybody getting fucked, basically, is how uh, what I mean by scumbag. Bosses fuck over the workers. The workers fuck over the bosses. And everybody fucks over the customer. 10 out of 10. And as far as everybody's concerned, the official story is everything is getting done as planned. It could be worse. I could be working for a big company and I could be getting, like, no useful work experience. It's actually a problem that they had with a lot of apprentices. Is there was, like, two straight generations of tradesmen who just couldn't do anything. Because they were just, run here, get this, for five years. And that was their apprenticeship. Lucky enough that my company is small, so, uh, they get me to actually do shit. Garfield's back screaming at my door again. You've been in and out five times today. Bro, just go take a nap. Keep crying, I'm not letting you in. I'm gonna keep leaving my desk every five minutes. Gotta stop being a big baby. I got a stream. I got a stream that I'm doing. Besides, I'm gonna get cuddles afterwards, so. No big lap cat. But it's the only one wants to be a lap cat in like 20 minute intervals nowadays. That's how it is with fussy old animals. So like when he was younger, he'd, he'd, he'd sleep in my lap for like 4 or 5 hours straight. Just would not leave. And now it's like, no, no, now it's too hot. Now I'm going to go over and sit by the window. Mm, now it's too cold. I'm going to go sit in the hallway. And then he comes back in again and sit in my lap. He's a good boy. He's a sweet cat. He's a rescued boy. He's the biggest in the house of 15 cats. When he came here and he's like, oh my god, I got food and nobody's trying to take it from me? That's great. When we got him, they told us he wasn't a lap cat. And he took to me right away. He's a good cat. 
Remember, kids, love your animals. Don't make love to your animals. It's animal abuse. Growing up, Steve Irwin was one of my childhood heroes. Crocodile hunter. Taken before his time. I'm glad to see that his kids are doing well. They're doing their dad proud. They're doing conservation and nature work. If I remember right, his son has a converse, conservation uh, in his dad's memory. Steve Irwin's memory. And his daughter, and doing wildlife TV shows, talking about animals, doing all kinds of shit like that. I think that's pretty cool. And whether you're religious or not, or you think there is an afterlife, I like to think that Steve Irwin's looking down on his kids and he's proud. Good, we're good, we're good. Yeah, that's all the silver on that one. Okay. And you can, you can sort of see what I was talking about. But it's not really showing up on camera. Let's see if I can get it to catch the light. But you can see the the white highlighting does shine through on the metal. And it makes a, it's a subtle difference, but... It's there, trust me. And it'll show more once we actually do more highlighting. Do I still have shit typed in on Discord? Let me test something real quick. Let me just... Okay. So that still works no matter what window's open. Cool, cool, cool. Just, uh, just testing a hotkey. So I do have a big smash to kill microphone button, which I recommend everybody gets. Doesn't matter if you stream or not, but you should you should have a hot key to kill your mic if you have a voice chat. It's good manners. Just to stop people from fucking yelling in your microphone, you mute it when you cough or sneeze, or when you gotta yell to somebody in a different room. Or when your idiot neighbor is revving their motorbike at fucking 10 o'clock at night. Oh yeah, that's something I get to look forward to in uh, the nicer weather. You have a guy who lives two streets over, who is extremely rude, who likes to come over to our street to ride up and down with his dirt bike. And he'd stopped doing that for a while. Uh, after one particularly uh, surly neighbor of ours hucked a beer bottle at his head as he came tearing down the street. Well, naturally, the guy got knocked off his bike. And he stood up to give our neighbor what for, our good neighbor uh, what for. And saw the guy... Was a good foot taller than him. And twice his weight. And he never came back to the street again until that guy moved away the other year. I don't know, throwing, throwing a beer bottle at somebody's head is very extreme. Well, not very extreme, but like the, just a thing that you don't really do. It's rude. It's violent. I don't like violence. But, uh,. I'm not exactly going to object to his action.
Cause that dude with the motorbike is kind of a scumbag. He doesn't treat his family very nice. He's got no cause to be like that. I'm not saying just unconditionally love your family. Like, I get it. Sometimes, sometimes your relatives are not great. But like, this dude's just out of line. I don't know, I got a little reel there, I'm sorry. Uh, the paint stream. Oh yes, uh, just continuity of consciousness when I paint. I view it as a f painting's kind of a, in a way it's a form of meditation. It's a good way to clear your head and get out whatever's on your mind. I don't know, brain's weird. It's funny like that. I don't know about you guys, but I, I tend to get like shower thoughts type deal when I paint. Shower thought of the day is a, uh, a dragon librarian, technically a bookworm. This is like like a worm is a type of dragon you see. It's a it's a pun. I'll see myself out. Uh, no, I chunked up the paint too much. It's fine. Wipe it off. It's good. It's okay. See, yeah, that's what I mean about about chunky metal paints. It's when they start to get chunky that you do gotta thin them down. Just don't thin them down too much. And if you want to see what I mean about that, just just put a little bit of. Put a lot of water on your brush. Not like you can see the drops beating off, but like enough that your brush is pretty moist, like pretty pretty wet. And uh, put a put a little bit of metallic paint on there, and go put it on a black surface. And you'll see it doesn't come out silver. It comes out a glittery black. And that's what I mean. What I'm talking about when I say don't don't thin your metals unless they're starting to dry out and they get like sort of sludgy, chunky. Yeah, our base coating is almost done. And we can move on to our detailing. I don't know if I'll detail all of them on the stream. I might just do one. I might just do the one that I find to be the most interesting. And then the rest of them I'll do all the detailing off stream. But hey, it's my YouTube channel. My paint studio. Technically a professional paint studio. I'm here to here to showcase my progress and my technique. Hopefully get some commissions. Somebody other than my one friend that I, I will will give me commissions whenever uh whenever I owe him money. Because because that's what I do. We used to we used to paint day Saturdays. I think I mentioned this once. Actually, for uh, not forced, but convinced me and a few other friends to sit through the entirety of One Piece. Which, for those of you that are unaware, is a is an anime with like nine hundred episodes, closer to a thousand now. Sorry, that was off camera. And uh, yeah, we just sort of. One Saturday, and an occasional weeknight at a time. Sat down, painted, 
and worked our way through that show over the course of a year and a bit. And, uh, because we were using his skip the dishes or whatever the fuck app it was, all the bills were going to his credit card. And, uh, rather than pay him back, because I'm somebody who doesn't typically carry cash, which is starting to change now that I'm in the trades, but, uh, yeah, I'd just I'd take commissions for him rather than go take out cash. Which was good at the time because uh, I was also unemployed for that year. Didn't really have a big job. I had consistent work, it's just none of it was very high paying. And I was just teaching and tutoring. Which is good money if you can get the hours, but after school programs are like two hours a day at most. And my boss is at the teaching program. But the guy in charge of paying hours was just straight fucking scumbag. Like I'm only getting paid for the two hour for the hour or two that I'm teaching, right? And he's like, nah, you gotta show up an hour before and you gotta Reorganize all the robotics kids, and you gotta. I taught robotics, by the way. You gotta take inventory and let me know. And I'm like, number one, that's not my job. Check out the contract I signed. Uh, it's teaching. Uh, two. If I'm gonna do that an hour before. You're gonna pay me three hours a day. Thirty-five an hour, two. By the way. That teaching job was. It was a good job. But, you know, like, 10 hours a week max, unless you're running a summer camp or a week camp. Like, doesn't really add up. We're actually pretty sure that they lied to one of their employees to get them to sign on. Because she assumed she was going to be teaching, like, a full time teacher's job. That's what she was told she would be doing. And she found out she's only working, like, one hour a day, and she was visibly annoyed. Let's put it that way. We're like, no, it's, it's an after-school program. Did they tell you it was going to be full-time? Because they lied. Yes, well, he would stop meowing in the hallway if literally anybody other than me would give him attention, so. Cat's meowing again. I feel bad about it, but, like, can't have him in my lap while I'm painting. And he will get his attentions. We'll get them when I'm done. I think we're gonna go for two hours tonight. What time is it? Oh, man, it's ten o'clock. It's an hour and a half already. Forgot I started at 8.30. Late today. Yeah, I hear you, little bud. I hear you. My poor boy. Oh, I'm gonna give him good cuddles in a minute. He's a good cat. He's a very good cat. No, it's buzzing me. No, I'm not interested. Piss off. Piss off. Okay, what do I want to go over? Look at the shirts we are going to do. We're going to do parchment tan? Yeah, we're going to do German camo. That's what we're going to do. Can I salvage any of this? No? That's completely fucked. Great. Okay. I might get a proper, proper painting uh, mug. Were two great coffee cups I saw a couple years back, and it was uh, paint water and not paint water, which is what was written on the two of them. And one of my friends, it's like, there's, there's no way that's actually that big of a problem, is there? 
And then there was, uh... I had to remind them of the time. And I used to drink... I used to drink a lot of soju at one point. I don't know why, but I did. And, uh... You see my little water dish here. Oh, turn off autofocus while I'm telling this story. My little water dish. Well, I used to drink soju out of this adorable little Mount Fuji cup that my friend brought me back from Japan, which is full of dust right now because it's been sitting behind my computer monitor for I don't know how long because I haven't drank soju in forever. And uh, it's about the same size, slightly taller. They both used to sit a little over that way before I started my newer sort of layout that I've been experimenting with. And then one time, I cleaned my brush off in the soju and then shotgunned the glass of paint water. It, it wasn't nice was not pleasant. I've since made several uh, several memes about that. This juice is banging, yo. That's paint water, you idiot. Piss off. Not you guys. Anybody who's watching, you guys are okay. One of my friends keeps sending me dumb shit. When we play Killing Floor later, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna medic him. I wanna sit there. My medigun. I wanna heal everybody but him. Actually crazy. It's been a it's been a hot minute since I played Killing Floor 2. I was playing it again the other night because him and his friends started playing it again. I didn't know they gave the medic a heal thrower. Which is just a flamethrower full of heals. Nah, shut him off, Cam. I think that that is pretty great. I'm having a lot of fun with that as my weapon. That and the healing mind dispenser. Healing mind dispenser, really funny. Plays these, it, it, it places down these awful little globules that tease to surfaces. Do a fuck ton of damage to enemies when they walk over them. I like to play as the priest, he's funny. Reverend Alberts, is I believe the name of his character. There we go, it's coming together. It is coming together. I'm gonna have to do multiple coats because that, that parchment color likes to go on thick. And that's fine. We can do multiple coats. Actually, I think my palette's starting to dry up. I haven't put on enough water. Well, that's fine. You can you can thin your paints on the brush as well. So that's a secret you just learned that white palette companies don't want you to know about. Unfortunately, it's a lot harder to control the dilution of your paints as I've just. As I've just done. Why are you out of focus? Come on. Turn off autofocus. As you can see there, my, my paint is way too watery. So we'll let that sit. I'm going to let you sit and we'll move on to the next. And hopefully it will be less watery on you. That's a bit better. 
Nope, I may have just messed this up, which may be a sign that it's time to call it. I might be a little tired. Let's get oh man, yeah, no, I should have should have painted these before I assembled them. Especially this guy at the very least. Like, this guy's just the worst. Dude, he's got so much shit in the corners that I can't get at. Like, it's right there. It's that arm that's up next to his face. I cannot get in there. I can get up most of it, I think. Fuck. That's one of the biggest tricks with uh, pinning before you paint, is figuring out what you can get away with painting while it's assembled, and what you can't. But I actually am. I think I'm going to call it here, though, for the night. So if you tuned in, thank you very much. If you're watching this in the future, also thank you. And, uh, best of luck in your endeavors, or your hobbying, whatever it may be. And stay safe out there, kids. We, uh, we unfortunately live in interesting times. Good night.